In 2005, their grade three ranking was 16th. In 2011, it was eighth. In 2000, that was in language arts. In 2005, their grade three mathematics ranking was 15th. In 2011, it was sixth. In 2005, its grade seven language arts ranking was 18th. In 2011, it was ninth. In 2005, their grade seven mathematics ranking was 23rd. In 2011, it was fifth. Elizabeth eighth graders have increased their proficiency in mathematics by 51% in the last three years. This Board of Education was one of a very small number of boards throughout the country selected by the Broad Foundation to participate in a training program. And the chairman of the foundation that ran that training program sent me an email in which he described the Elizabeth Board as a star participant. In addition, school superintendent Munoz was one of a very small group of applicants. I think 7% were selected in 2006 to participate in the Broad Superintendent Academy. In fact, Commissioner Cerf, who got a briefing on this report yesterday, was a graduate of the Broad Superintendent Academy in 2005. And the Broad Foundation has been tracking Elizabeth's progress. And the report quotes their executive director as praising the board and the school system for its progress since the board had its training. Elizabeth is collaborating, the only school district in the state, collaborating with the Panasonic Foundation to improve instruction in the public schools. Elizabeth is one of a few school systems selected by the Merck Institute for Science Education. And they've been collaborating with Merck for three years Elizabeth school students in fourth grade have improved their proficiency in science by 38% since 2005, and for eighth graders by 57%. There's a program that the federal government runs. It's called the National Blue Ribbon Schools. And it's an effort by the United States Department of Education to find the best public schools in the country. Most of the schools that have won this designation in New Jersey were in the richest districts, about 60%. There is only one school district in New Jersey that has had three public schools in the last five years awarded the blue ribbon, and that school district is Elizabeth. And there's two ways to win this blue ribbon. If you read the federal regulations, one way is if you come in and say, we're a poor district, we have kids who are economically deprived, and we've shown great improvement. That's not how Elizabeth won its blue ribbon. Instead, they won its blue ribbon the hard way, under the second category of exemplary public schools in which they compete head to head with the best public schools in New Jersey. And these three schools, the William Halloran School number 22 in 2006, the Victor Moravleg Elementary School number 21 in 2008, and the Terrence Riley School number seven in 2011, earned their designation because they were among the state's highest performing schools, not because of demographics. Elizabeth has a preschool program serving 3,500 students. They have bilingual classes. Their evaluations by recognized state evaluation groups have gone up significantly in the last five years. And as a result of this preschool program, proficiency schools and scores from grades kindergarten to second grade are 2000, in 2010 were 80 percent in reading, 87 percent in language arts, and 87 percent in mathematics. Extraordinary achievement for grades K to 2. The report explains that Elizabeth has gotten rid of all of the middle schools, which is a, 
progressive change in education endorsed by some of the best school districts in the country and these public schools are now K to 8 during the same period Elizabeth has built seven new public schools they have found that discipline incidents are reduced less school violence less substance abuse I told you before that Elizabeth had the biggest public high school in the state 5200 students if you read today's New York Times editorial page there's an editorial endorsing the fact that New York City has made their high schools smaller and changed them into specialty high schools that's what Elizabeth did three years ago they took Elizabeth High School with 5200 students and broke it down into six separate high schools Elizabeth High School Alexander Hamilton John Dwyer Thomas Jefferson William Halsey Thomas Edison the report shows how test scores have increased significantly and how advanced placement tests and college preparation efforts have increased substantially now I can't evaluate this ranking by the Washington Post but the Washington Post every year publishes a challenge index and we cite to the website in the report it evaluates high schools throughout the country on the basis of how well they prepare students for college in 2011 they ranked the Elizabeth High Schools second in New Jersey and 176th in the country and you can look at their website uh, to understand how they uh, do their evaluation. Elizabeth has a wonderful ceremony every fall. It's called the Perfect Score Award Ceremony. I was invited to it this year, but I couldn't go. But in 2005, when Pablo Munoz became superintendent, Elizabeth had 11 kids that made perfect scores on the state standardized test. In 2011, on November 22, 2011, they had the Perfect Score Award Ceremony in Elizabeth, at which all the parents were invited to see 330 Perfect Score Awards given to Elizabeth High School kids. That's an increase of about 2,600% and it's an extraordinary ceremony and it reflects this culture of educational excellence that this school system <coughs> has advanced. The report then talks about the employee interviews and it explains that we hired Professor De La Torre, an associate professor of educational statistics in the Department of Educational Psychology at Rutgers Graduate School of Education. And we gave him the entire list of Board of Education employees, all 3,800. And he selected at random, without any input from my firm or from the Elizabeth staff, the employees who would be interviewed. And Professor De La Torre picked out the list and made sure we had teachers and administrators and custodians and security guards. Some were Spanish speaking we had a good cross-section the union sent a letter to all the employees and said you don't have to go you don't have to go to this interview we had 131 employees who attended and of those 131 employees 41 percent never made a donation to a board election campaign of those employees who were interviewed and answered the question 63 percent never had participated in a campaign event, never had volunteers. And of 131 employees, only one, one employee said he once thought that maybe he felt pressure to make a donation. And of those employees, only one said he may have felt pressure to volunteer in a campaign. And it was the same employee, the same one 
who felt, who said he might have felt pressure, and he explained. He said his supervisor left tickets on his desk to an event and said, you should go. And he said, I sort of felt a little pressure. Everyone else denied that there was any pressure. And as our lawyers reported when they came back from these interviews, that the employees that they interviewed said often that the reason they went to these fundraising events was that they were fun. They were social events. There was no pressure. There was dinner. There was dancing. Often there were no speeches. In a later section of the report, we list every single fundraising event since 2003 that we were able to find records of, and we explain that in almost all except two, the invitations were mailed. It's hard to pressure people through the mail. The invitations were mailed, and the checks were returned through the mail. We describe two events in which the fundraising was done differently. We talk also about nepotism. In the Star Ledger, in addition to the editorial I read to you before about the foul smell, the Star Ledger on June 9th wrote this in an editorial. Nepotism is rampant. At least 20 district employees are relatives of past or present board members. The U.S. or state attorney general's office should be all over this board. And in my report, I described that editorial demand for investigation as uninformed and irresponsible. The Star-Ledger never said in its articles or editorial that of the 15 employees who are related to current board members, eight of them got their jobs before their relative ever joined the board. You read the Star-Ledger story in editorial, you'll never see that. Nor did the Star-Ledger explain that before 2008 in New Jersey, it was legal for boards to employ relatives of board members. And the fact that it was legal reflected an understanding in New Jersey that goes back to Mayor Hay. In big cities, the Board of Education historically has been a major source of employment. Not that that's good, and the change in the law and the change in the policy in 2008 was salutary and in the public interest. But the Star Net Ledger never shined the spotlight on any other big city in the state to compare the number of relatives. In Elizabeth, the number of relatives who were hired after their relative got on the board was 12, probably 0.3 hundreds of 1% of the total employees. So we discuss in this report every single relative. We explain when the relative was appointed. We explain what their job is. We explain what their salary is and point out that every one of their salaries is governed by collective bargaining agreements. And we explain that not one of those hirings violated board policy, and this board adopted a nepotism policy two years early. And in addition, I had one of our lawyers check the qualifications of every single relative to make sure that every relative had all of the credentials necessary for the job that they were hired for. So I think you'll find the section on nepotism to be interesting and to be completely responsive to what the Star-Ledger said. The next section of the report deals with the Star-Ledger sources. And we name the seven identified sources in the report. And I'll tell you their names. Frank Cuesta, Louis Ault, Ronald Matlos, Thomas Dunn, Ronald Davidson, Patty Galanti, and Eddie Branquino. And these were the sources that said that people were pressured to make donations. 